The following is a comfortably zoned radio network production. Thank you, Tally Olson. I am back, and you are comfortably zoned with me, the Zigzag Man in Alameda, California, right across the bay from San Francisco, across the moat from Oakland, and from the lagoon as Archie Bunker would have pronounced it. We are uh, having a heat wave in Alameda, but it shouldn't affect anything because, as usual, I'm talking to one of the most interesting people on the planet. That's what I do. And uh, Matthew DiBias is no exception. How are you, sir? Well, trying to stay alive amidst all the madness and the chaos and the viral and the virus and everything like that. It's just every day, man. You just you wake up, you put your hand to your forehead, you know, and you check your throat to see can you swallow, you know, and just pray that you know <laughs> they don't get you, man. Of course, I know. Of course. I know. What are you doing specifically? I'm just curious. Everybody's different. To take a caution that you won't be um, infected. Well, I've been teleworking, so it's not like I'm going to a workplace. Uh, for the most part, though, about a, several weeks, about a, almost a month ago, we did go back to our workplace, but only uh, one or two days out of the week and only for six hours and very small skeleton crew, so I'm hardly with any people at all. I just keep to myself. I wear the mask. I wear a mask. Uh, mm -hmm. When I go grocery shopping, in addition to my mask, I also wear, you know, vinyl gloves and all that. Uh, you know, and I just, I socially distance. You know, I stay, you know, I stay away from people when I run and when I walk. You know, I don't, you know, don't let people, anybody get close to me and all that. And uh, somehow, amazingly, through the grace of God, <laughs> I, you know, I haven't taken sick. And uh, luckily, I have not lost anyone in my family or among my, my relatives and all of that, though I'd had three distant cousins test positive for COVID, but luckily they were able to kick, survive it, you know, and get their home and safe, and that's the most important thing, Ralph. You know what's scary, Matthew? Yeah. Is that there are people that come down with it and don't die and are obviously grateful, but there's a big percentage of folks they're finding that once they come down with it, it can stay with you a long time, forever, and uh, it basically knocks the hell out of your circulatory system, your kidneys, the lining of your heart. I'm hearing a lot of bad stories that 75% of those folks um, affect, who have been infected are... Um, really at risk with stuff that can be with you for the rest of your life. This is one bad situation led by one of the most inept folks. And I don't say he's stupid. I think he's well calculated, but he is Hitler like. And about a year and a half ago on these, on these very airwaves, you and I talked for the first time. Yeah. Could be two years by now. Yeah. I don't know if you remember my reaction to when you equated, I'm a Jew, yeah. and um, you equated what Trump was doing two years ago, this is before the virus, all this stuff, to, um, to Hitler. You yeah. used that analogy. And the hairs at the back of my head stood up. I said to myself, I said, wait a minute, this is either an anti-Semitic or just delusional in terms of his thinking. And we talked for a little bit that first time, had you back shortly thereafter, and pretty soon um, I got to see the analogy really clearly. So yeah. I want to... Um, why don't you uh, go back a year and a half, two years ago, 
tell me what your thought process was then about this topic and tell me has it been in for is your has your thinking been in, reinforced in your head uh what changes have you had put it in your words actually da- ralph i never doubted for a moment uh, i think the rightness of my thesis i think day after day week after week month after month Year after year, three and a half years now, you know, step by step, inch by inch, you know, uh, my prophecy, I think, is frighteningly become real. And we are, you know, we are, tr- you know, we're being pushed violently against our will towards some type of a fascist state. And I think you can see his reaction, his non inactions against COVID as part of a design. I mean, I think, I think, it's. I it, people say, oh, he's just being stupid and all that. I, I get the feeling that his inaction is part of a design, in a sense, because there, this, the fact that it, it is ravaging uh, the majority of the non-white uh, population, African Americans, uh, Latinos, uh, hey, uh, Native Americans on the Indian reservations, they are being badly and elderly by and them. elderly folks who are dying. Uh, in, by the handful and getting off of social security at yeah. the moment they pass. That's it. And what he wants to do anyway is cut social security. Yeah. And yeah. he wants to, what I call call the herd. Yeah. And, and in a sense, yeah. And a sense, and also the fact that this, this virus is the one thing he can't bribe into silence, can't buy it off. He can't, make it sign a non-disclosure order or a non-disclosure agreement. It's basically, it has humiliated him, mocked him, defied him. And I think in his rage, his narcissistic rage, I think he allow he is allowing this virus to destroy people because even if he knows he's going to go down electoral defeat, I think in other words, he's, he knows he's going over a cliff. He wants to take as many innocent people over that cliff with him. And that, in a sense, it's a form of metaphorical immolation, as it were. In other words, if I die, I want to make sure a lot of other people die with me, in a sense. I mean, it's like Hitler in the fi- after the Allies crossed the Rhine River and the Oder River and they were converging on Berlin. Hitler wanted every German to fight to the death, and he wanted the entire, all of Germany laid waste. Basically, immolation, uh, not only himself, but also for all the, the whole thing. And I think what you're seeing here is another form of metaphorical immolation. Yeah, he wants to win and he'll you cheat every he'll use every dirty cheating tactic to preserve himself. But at barring that and and, and he, he will make sure that this virus causes as much damage as humanly possible if you believe that he's a tool of the Russians, which I believe as well that he is a tool. I mean, it just all it does is help you know our enemies abroad because our country is dying within and being destroyed. Our armed forces, everything, the economy, infrastructure, everything is being de- being destroyed by this virus. Now, that said, I want you to put my mind at ease and tell me that the Biden Harris combination will be Trump. Now. I'm not the one who thinks that, wow, now we got Biden and Harris. Things are going to be real cool. They are no more ultra centrist Democrats that don't believe in fair health care. Minimum wage can be negotiated. I know. Do you concur with that? It's yeah, not going to be Trump, notwithstanding. We got to get him out of there. It's going to be no utopia once these two are elected. Do you follow me on that? Yeah, I know. I know we both wanted Bernie to win, but in a sense, the situation turned against us. Once uh, Biden took Super Tuesday, you know, he took Nevada and he took Super tu- South Carolina and Super Tuesday. In a sense. Bernie, Bernie was lost, and I think Bernie knew it. But also, Bernie knew 
that another four years of Trump would be an absolute catastrophe. And basically, it would be another Holocaust when you think about it. In a sense, we're already in a Holocaust when you think about mm-hmm. it. So in a sense, you know, Biden may not have made the best, but we have to go with what we've got here. We've got this hand that we're dealt with, and the alternative is literally death, Ralph. It is death. No no question that we have yeah, to get Trump I, out of that. Yeah. But well, we, I, we gotta do I'm just we saying, can. I'm being pragmatic yeah, you know, um, we're going. We're reaching back four years. We've lost four years. Yeah, and, um, and not only that, it has been a holocaust. Yeah, a thousand yeah. people die a day, and which means two, maybe three airliners go down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, per day, and nobody blinks anymore. We've become so accustomed. Mm-hmm to the bad news on a daily basis that, well, 167, they say it's going to go to 220. Let's see if we can't keep it at two, whatever. Yeah. No, this is something's wrong with, with this, uh, with this setup. Um, do you yeah. see, uh, let me, let me ask you, uh, let me complete the thought. I want your opinion. What do you think the chances of Biden and Harris winning? It's still, I mean, so far the polls indicate that they're still ahead. But the thing is, now, the stock market seems to be coming around a little bit. You know, some businesses are opening up a little bit. I mean, even I went, I mean, I never was unemployed, Ralph, thank God. I was never, I never had to collect unemployment. I was teleworking, I was getting full pay. So technically, economically, the virus never hurt me specifically. But, you know, you're seeing a footling attempts at trying to get the economy going again and all that, restaurants and various other things and all that. The key now is getting people motivated to do whatever it is they have to do, especially those mail-in ballots. I mean, don't laugh, Ralph. Earlier today, I was trying to figure out where – I don't even want to trust the mails. I don't know why I want to deliver it via the U.S. Postal Service. What I want to do is find a drop-off box where I can put my mail-in ballot in through there. That's what I want to do. And I was tr- looking up online and trying to figure out, okay, where are the drop-off boxes and all that? But it's still too early right now. I figure next month we'll be told where, where our drop-off boxes are. But you're seeing all these games. The king is, it's tough. But man, it's going to be so tough. I mean, you've got the sabotaging of the Postal Service there. You've got... You know the the Republican possible governors Russian, and those possible states. Russian in, interference. Yeah. He, yeah. he's yeah. definitely in bed with Putin. No yeah. question yeah. about that. Plus, you've got the Republican governors, those states that they control, either by the governorship or the state legislature or both. You know, they're shutting down polling places in minority areas. They're trying to put the kibosh on mail-in voting, making it as difficult as humanly possible. To, you know, to do that, you know, forcing people, you know, to go uh, go hunting tens, hundreds of miles out of the way just to cast a vote like they did in Kentucky and in Wisconsin, you know, and things like that. Uh, it's it's going to be so hard. And the key is, in a sense, what we got to do is we got to take it to the streets, Ralph. I mean, basically what we saw in the summer with people taking the streets for George Floyd, we got to convert that what they did for George Floyd and Aubrey and all those people and uh, translate it into ballot power. In other words, you know, do whatever you can, educate the public. In other words, find your drop-off and box. Get, okay. and, get post- out, and get out the vote. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do that. You know, in other words, okay, the Postal Service ain't going to help you. Find your drop-off box. Find it, okay? Right. Get your ballots. Find it and do it early. Uh, and everyone who's listening to us, you know, Vote early. As soon as you get your mail-in ballot, don't wait till the last minute. As soon as I'm going to get mine, like September, October, I, I'm going to vote immediately because that's what I did in the primary. As soon as I got mine, I think I voted like three weeks ahead of the June 2nd Pennsylvania primary. I got that thing in way early, and it worked. You know, I got a notification in the email that, yep, you're duly counted and all that, so you're taken care of. So I'm saying to the listeners out there, don't wait till the last minute do it way ahead of time as soon as possible i was hearing people on msnbc telling rachel maddow and O'Don- lawrence o'donnell in other words do it early don't wait you know in other words apply for it as soon as you can 
get it as soon as you can and and post it. Del- either mail it or drop it off in the box as soon as you can. You know, don't wait. You know, because he who hesitates, we are lost. And then we are lost. And not only lost, we're dead. Dead, all of us. I um, fully believe it. There was a rumor on CNN that he was looking into herd immunity as a possibility. Yeah, yeah. I think, I don't laugh, I have this private little thought. I remember one time early in the virus, he said, oh, this thing will wash over the country. And he is so incapable of metaphysical thought. I have this theory, Ralph, that sometime like October, November, he knew about it. And he may have been talking to some of his so-called Christian conservatives. And I think one of them told him, in other words, this is, this is God's scourge against the liberals, you know, and, and, the, and all the minorities and all that. It's God's punishment. Let this thing wash over the country. And, and once they're all dead, then make, we'll make America safe for white people. You know, all that racist, you know, nonsense and all that. And he just, that's what he was doing was echoing that. And I think he believed that. Now, it would only kill minorities, you know, it would only kill certain groups, especially those cities and those states that voted against them. That's why he let it happen. You know, he wanted it to happen. Basically, genocide on the cheap, Ralph. That's my theory. Genocide on the cheap. I don't know if he's that deep a thinker. Yeah, but he's got aides who are that capable and that ruthless and that amoral, like Stephen Miller and Kushner. Yeah, you know? that's the first guy I would think of. Yeah, think Miller, of. you know, Barr. I mean, they, 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 they're murderers. I mean, they're, they're enablers. And, hey, they're uh, like McConnell, they're all working towards the Fuhrer. They're all working towards the Fuhrer, you know? M- McConnell said something the other day, though, that really uh, I looked into to his – little beady eyes and believed him he said they've been having elections in this country for 200 years i guarantee you that on november 3rd we're going to have an election yeah now, <laughs> that that was encouraging to me and there are yeah. a number of other republicans that seem to be falling off the uh, uh, what do you call it? The idiot train. Yeah. Um, and uh, Romney's not the only one. And this is really strange. Yeah. Me saying Romney's a, a good alternative. This that, and that. I thought he was a horrible candidate. I thought that he's um, uh, for a number of reasons. But uh, look how far we've regressed in eight years. Or yeah. 12 years. Yeah. But the thing about um, Romney is he's playing all seven ends against the middle. I know what he's trying to do. I think with the impeachment vote he did, yeah, technically it was courageous, and God bless him for it and all that. But what he has, what he's thinking of is 2024. Let's say through the grace of God Almighty that uh, the Fuhrer goes down in flames on Election Day in November this year, and we, you know, Biden takes over. Biden Harris become the new administration, God hope, you know, God willing. Then you have to figure out what, where does the GOP go then? Because, you know, I, either, there's going to be the doggone to scramble for power in New York, you're going to see is a Republican civil war. It all depends on if you prosecute Trump, and I hope to God we do prosecute him, not just him, but his entire stinking crew, his, his, his sons, Ivanka, you know, Kushner, you know, the whole, you have to prosecute the whole stinking lot of them because if, if, they're, if some of them are still out, they still retain control of the party because they still got the Russian money backing their play. What you have to do is basically prosecute the entire lot like Nuremberg, do it like a Nuremberg trial with that, that family and, and all their allies, Barr and Miller and all, the whole stinking lot of them. And what you have to, what is left is, Who's going to run the Republican Party? I mean, is it Pence? Is it T- Ted Cruz of Texas? You know, they're 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 trying to jockey for position. You've got Romney, but also that guy Cotton from Arkansas, that that Klansman, that uh, Senator Cotton from Arkansas. Now that's a he's a dangerous dude. Romney, Romney seems to have a heads up on that, and I will assume it would be him. Who would you vote for if Romney? were to run against Biden, parties notwithstanding, 
Who's a better still candidate? Biden. Still, Biden. still Biden, man. Because, hey, you know, Romney is still a corporate, you know, he was still that corporate type, you know, making America safe for corporate fascism. Seriously. I mean, he's a well, I got to tell you that Biden is in, in cahoots with the, with the drug companies, the big farms, and he doesn't necessarily want people to make a workable wage. Yeah. He's, but the thing um, yeah. yeah. But the thing is, though, Ralph, considering the desperate state of the economy, the ravages that uh, COVID-19 has done to the economy, uh, education and all that, I think I get the feeling that if Biden and Harris win in November and God hope that God willing they are, I get the feeling that 1921, I mean, 2021 could be like 1933. In other words, it doesn't matter that Biden and Harris might be, quote, unquote, centrist. I think the necessity and the desperation of our situation calls for a very massive program, like a New Deal or a great society. In other words, you've got to literally rewrite the entire society and re-alter it again. I think, I think you're going to see a potential for a sharp uh, shift to the left. I basically, Bernie stuff. You know, Bernie Sanders light, as it were. You know, I think I don't think mm-hmm. Bernie's going to be denied. I think you're going to see some aspects of Sanders, you know, Bernie Sanders' programs because, hey, Bernie's platform is the future of the Democratic Party. It is the future of American liberalism. And Biden and Harris would be stupid to ignore that fact. I because you notice in the in the primaries. You know, before all the primaries were, all the candidates, you know, with maybe one or two exceptions, were taking notes out of Bernie Sanders' playbook. There were so many echoes on various aspects of his thing in terms of health care, education, you know, uh, you know, taxation of the wealthy and all that. I think you're going to see a sharp shift to the left. I think Biden knows the tidal wave is coming. He knows the future. He knows he needs that support, especially from the young kids. The young kids who were campaigning for Bernie, he's got to he's got to appeal to them. He's got to revamp education. He's got to revamp the, the tax code. He's got to do a lot of things. Improve mail in balloting, you know, expand rights for an African American you know, for for non white people. He's got to do it. He they he he couldn't win it on the nomination without their help. So he's really got to be more liberal than he probably would have originally intended. So I have a feeling the necessity of the situation. I think you're going to see something very radical. And it's also it's like Newtonian applying Newtonian physics to politics. For three and a half years, I said this on Facebook. We have been assaulted by the radical right, the basically the radical fascist right. We have had fascism and race hatred shoved down our throats. And it's like the old adage: for every reaction, for every action, there is a reaction. Okay, you know, for three and a half years, we've been assaulted by the radical right. Now, for the next four years, God willing, you're going to see a, you're going to see a reaction from the radical left. And I think we're good. I think we're good. the potential for being radical is there, Ralph. And I I am inclined to be hopeful on that on that issue that if we can get the Senate, if we can retain the House and get the Senate, I think. We have to do it. We got to. We got to get in while we got a, We got majorities and make it. You know, and just ram it through, and just you know, just like Lyndon did with the Great Society from '65 to '67. You know, just bill after bill after bill. While we still have that chance, we got to remake this country and redo it all over again because of what the GOP has done for the past 50 years. You know, starting with Nixon. You know, making America safe for corporate fascism. And with this, we got to put a stop to this. Because we're we're dying. We're, this country is dying. The Constitution is dying. It's it's like literally that officer Schoen putting his knee on the back of George Floyd's neck. That's what the Trump administration is. It's been putting a knee on the back of innocent people, upon the rights of you know every not just non-white people. You know on all of our rights. Everything has been put to risk there. Everything from freedom of speech to religion. To voting, everything, you know, everything is at risk, and we've got to take that knee to off the back. Of our to peaceful protest in this country, we can't. I mean, you saw the gassing right in front of of the church where he went to give that photo op. Yeah, <coughs> um, yeah and these and, are Americans and, being gassed by Americans. Yeah, it's crazy. And, and the thing is, he's using that. I call him Einstein. Excuse me, the frog in my throat. 
He's used, I call them Einsatz group because that's literally what they are. How do you know that they're real federal police? How do you know? I mean, why are they concealing themselves? Why the mask? How come they're not showing their badges? I mean, how do you know that Barr didn't get, like, Klansmen or militia, you know, make them wear that protective gear and concealing gear, driving in unmarked cars? How do you know that they're real federal agents with real credentials? How do you know? How do you know he didn't get Klansmen or militia? Wouldn't surprise me if he did. Would not surprise me if he created his own. I mean, it's like Hitler's mm. Einsatz group, and they weren't really Wehrmacht units. They were SS units, and don't laugh. Some of those Einsatz group would recruit people from local populations to help with the extermination of Jews. Like in Lithuania, they got Lithuanian Germans to help out with the roundup of Lithuanian Jews and their extermination. In Yugoslavia, they used Bosnian Muslims to exterminate Yugoslavian Jews. And, and, hey, and they, also they, also use, they also used the Catholic Church to yeah. identify and round up Jews. Yeah. yeah. In I know in Poland for sure. Yeah. I know. Mm -hmm. I think Slovakians were like sympathetic, and they would use Slovaks, you know, to exterminate, you know, Czech, you know, Czech Jews and Slovakian Jews and all that. So there was cooperation amongst the Einsatz group, but not, they weren't all German. They would use, you know, ethnic et enemies of the indigenous Jewish population in the occupied territories to, you know, wreak ter terror. I mean, if he's using militias and, uh, and Klansmen as Einsatz group, and, you know, first po Portland was the test the probing ground, and he wants to put it in, uh, in major cities like Cleveland, you know, Cleveland, Chicago. And here's my prediction. If he's doing that in cities with there's significant African-American or minority populations like Philadelphia, uh, also the leadership is led by African-Americans or by minority uh, leadership, city council and mayor, in, the, in the mayoral office. I think if he's using those Einsatz group, and I think you're going to see genuine bloodshed because – if you if you create a genuine bloodshed on the streets, that too could be a way of interdicting election day. I mean, how can you conduct an election? You know, if you got shooting in the streets there, you know, uh, with Hitler's. Uh, I mean, with the, <laughs> I call Hitler Freudian slip, the Donald Einstein right. group and shooting in the crowds and all that. I mean, imagine election day. You got long lines at polling places. What's to stop those uh, those guys from coming? Oh, this is a riot, and they start tear gassing lines of voters to just to make sure they don't vote, Ralph. Think about that, Ralph. Think mm. about that. Using tear gas. Oh, this is a riot. It's not a riot. Oh. It's just a long line of people waiting to vote, their turn to vote, and they tear but gas they them. Call it a riot. But they call it a riot. Yeah, but think of that potential, Ralph, to stop voters, you know, especially if you see those long lines. In other words, COVID-19 be damned. I'm going to wait in line. I'll cast my ballot. I, I want to get rid of Donald Trump. And they send those guys out in their unmarked cars and their, co their Kevlar and their masks and all that and no credentials, and they start tear gassing lines of voters just to stop that. That's a potential thing. It wouldn't surprise well, me if that happens. Matthew, so much for you making me feel better about the immediate future. I know. Sorry, but hey, the potential. No, I mean, I'd believe yeah. me, I'd rather hear it if it is, whatever yeah. way it is. They're not yeah. hear it. Um, yeah. Knowledge yeah. is power. And that's why I have, have you on. Yeah. <laughs> Just you know, um, yeah. Don't laugh. The Philadelphia district attorney, the city district attorney, his name is, his name is Krasner. He said, he said if they come into Philadelphia, he, wants, he would want, to, want them arrested. And I hope if someone like him does something like that, because one thing, I would want to arrest them. Like, you know, get a SWAT team, surround those guys. They try to put, you know, pick up someone off the street. In other words, they, they get picked up. And I want to identify these people. And one, I want to know, one, are these real federal agents? I want their IDs. I want their faces. In other words, are you real, genuine federal agents? Or, hey, like I always we suspect, are they Klansmen or militias? If they're non-federal, okay. If they're non-federal, then, hey, I'm charging them. Charge them with kidnapping, charging them whatever you can charge them with. I throw the book at them, expose them, say, hey, these people are not real federal agents. These are bogus, so on and so forth, you know, and I'm going to throw the book at them and I'm going to expose these people. I hope someone, well, some prosecutor in some city has the guts to do that and just to see what would happen, you know, some type of exposure of some sort. Try to interdict these bastards. Okay, Matthew, um, I got my 
dose of reality, and I'm appreciative. Ralph, I love you, man. I missed you, man. Yeah, I really do. You know, and uh, hey. I'll, um, you're in my book. You know, I have a a, a book going. Yeah, it's um, a memoir of sorts. Yep. It's um, I'll announce the title. It's uh, Mary Jane is my girlfriend. Baseball <laughs> is my mistress. Beautiful. And, uh, yeah. A um, lot of stories, a lot of interviews, a lot of good times. My days with tops, my days of um, being a two-bit dope smoker. <laughs> hey, Ralph, when it comes out, I want you on my show, okay? If Anytime, we do like a- just, a- just ask me and I'm there. Yeah, either a one or two parter, okay? Because we, got, I want to, I want to help promote your book, okay, Ralph? Because I love you, man. I love you. Thank you, Matthew. You've been a, a boom. You've been a boom to my personal mental health yep. and comfortably own radio network. Uh, Thank you. In in that particular order, believe me. Um, yeah. So, be well and uh, come back soon. Yeah, and we're going to stand shoulder to aching shoulder, and we're going to beat Donald Trump. God God be on our side. Yes, well, um, or goddess. Yep, 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 yep. She'll, she'll do in a pinch. Yep. All right, my friend. Be good, be healthy, and happy trails. Happy trails to you, everybody, for listening. It's Comfortably Zone Radio Network. I'm the Zigzag Man, Ralph Tycho, from Alameda, California. Happy trails. Adios. Happy trails. All right. The proceeding has been a comfortably zoned network production. You are advised to keep your dreams wet, your humor dry, your children and grandchildren out of military recruiting offices and off the laps of clerics who wear dresses. Thank you for listening, everyone. Happy trails.